Welcome to a Healthy Push podcast. I'm Shannon Jackson, former anxiety sufferer turned adventure mom and anxiety recovery coach. I struggled with anxiety, panic disorder, and agoraphobia for 15 years. And now I help people to push past the stuff that I used to struggle with. Each week, I'll be sharing real and honest conversations along with actionable and practical steps that you can take to help you push past your anxious thoughts, the symptoms, panic, and fears. Welcome. You're right where you're meant to be. Okay, I feel like it's been a while since I've done a more personal episode, and I love these ones, and I'm really excited to just talk to you openly and honestly, and I'm definitely a little bit (laughs) uncomfortable and scared because there's a lot of vulnerability here in this conversation, but I, I love vulnerability. I swear I'm a sucker for making myself feel uncomfortable, (laughs) so here we go. So you may have seen that there's this trend going around on Instagram where people are saying Instagram is fake and then they're getting vulnerable and sharing some of the hard stuff that they're going through that they haven't necessarily shown on social media. And I'll tell you, I usually cringe and I hate these trends, but I'm actually loving this one. Because if you know me, you know I love vulnerability. And honestly, I've read quite a few of these threads and I found myself in tears and crying and feeling validated and feeling less alone and just all around more connected and just feeling good. So yeah, I personally jumped on this trend and I shared some hard stuff on Instagram that I've been going through. And then I thought, I can't really dive into all of this here on Instagram, and I don't really want to share all this stuff here, but I'd love to share it on the podcast. So here we are. And I really want to start by saying that I don't think Instagram is necessarily fake. Like, yes, there are lots of pages and people who aren't necessarily being authentic, But I think lots of the stuff that is shared on Instagram is very real, like the stuff I share on my page. But sometimes it is curated and that's okay. Like it's okay that the content is curated. And this is why I always say it's important to be very mindful and choosy of which accounts you follow on social media. Like I always remind myself, social media is a place where we come to get connection and to laugh and to be entertained and yeah, to, to learn a, a little bit, but social media is this place that like can just be really fun and make us feel connected. So yeah, I'm excited to share with you some personal stuff and get vulnerable with you. And this is stuff that I've never really shared, so this might be a little challenging for me, but I I love challenging myself. And I just have to say, I am currently working on all these things, but I don't necessarily have all the answers or fixes for these things. So this episode is more of me just sharing where I'm at and what I've been working on and maybe some helpful tips, but I just hope that you're here to just hear me and and feel less alone and to feel more connected. So I hope this will help you in some way. Okay, so let's jump in to some stuff that's been really hard for me recently that I haven't shared much before. And honestly, this might be part one of like a part two, three, four series because there's a lot that I struggle with. Like I'm human and just because I don't struggle with an anxiety disorder anymore doesn't mean that I don't struggle with things. I am very human and I have lots and lots of struggles. (laughs) So the first one, and this is hard for me to say, oddly, I don't really have friends. And most people would probably assume that I have a bunch of friends, but that's definitely not the case. And the hard part about this is that I've been seriously craving connection and community, and I just really, really lack it and feel like I've sort of always kind of lacked it. 
So to give some context, I have a best friend and I have a couple of other friends that I see from time to time, but I don't necessarily see them regularly. And the tough part with my best friend is that she's always lived states and states away since we graduated college. And we keep in touch regularly and we visit each other, but I so wished that she lived closer because it's really hard when that's like your one true connection, but you don't live in close proximity to each other. So yeah, over the past couple of years, I've really been finding myself wanting to connect more with people and have more friendships and the the lacking has been like really heightened for me, but making friends has never been easy for me. And honestly, I hate it. Like I am introverted. I'm pretty shy when I meet new people. And it's just always been tricky for me to put myself out there and meet new people. And I know I'm not alone in this. Like I know, I think for many people, even if you're not introverted, it is really hard to put yourself out there and meet new people. And sometimes with this, I've I've thought like maybe I have a little bit of social anxiety. Like maybe this is social anxiety, but I really don't think it is. I think I've just always been shy and introverted. And it's always been a bit tricky for me to navigate people. And now that I'm in my mid-30s and getting closer to 40, it sometimes feels like I've missed my opportunity. Like, I don't know if you can relate to this, but sometimes I look around and it's as if everyone has friend groups or at least two to three good friends. And I'm over here like, cool, I don't. And and then I convince myself it's a me problem, even though I know that this is not the case. So making friends is hard. Like it requires a lot of vulnerability and facing discomfort. And this is something I'm definitely working on. But I wanted to share this one because I know that I'm not alone and I know that I'm especially not alone in feeling this deep desire to want connection and community and to feel like you're really, really lacking something that you want and you just feel like, I don't even know what to do. Like, how do I even make a friend? And I think a lot of us want this connection just for the simple fact that we're wired as humans to want and need connection. But I also think that many of us are even feeling it even more so lately and and wanting it more so lately because we're all so disconnected from each other. Like lots of people are working from home and needing to leave the house less and just living on their phones and it makes it so hard to cultivate connection, like the type of connection we're so desperately wanting. So I've been challenging myself recently to go to events and to go to coffee shops and to go to the gym, which is like a big thing for me, and to join hiking groups. And I actually booked a woman's trip this summer that I'm super excited about. It's a trip to the Canadian Rockies with 20 women I don't really know, except for seeing a couple of them on social media and them sharing their lives on social media. And although I'm really terrified about this trip, (laughs) I know that it will be so good for me and it will hopefully help me to make some connections. So yeah, I'm just challenging myself. Like I know what I have to do. Like it's a lot of times, it's not that we don't know. Like we know what we have to do. We sort of know how to make friends. It's just like, ugh, really uncomfortable and scary. And and we convince ourselves like it's just better to not face any of that. And to just stay over here and like continue on. But that's not what I want. And I know that's not what I want. So I am really pushing myself. And you know, the other tricky part with all of this is that with the work that I do, I always meet so many amazing and wonderful people that like I deeply, deeply connect with. But they never live close to where I live. And 
this is really tough because I always say like, why can't I find people like this in my day to day? But it's, it's just so different, of course, with the work that I do. I'm able to bring so many people together and we're all like very like-minded. But yeah, I'm trying to just be strategic and thinking of different ways I can create more friendships. And I actually have some upcoming plans to meet with people who are past students of mine, like to actually meet in real life and connect and just go out and And I'm really hoping that I can build some friendships that way too. So what I want to say to this one, this first one, like I don't really have friends, is if you're in a similar boat, I want you to know you're not alone and we're going to work on this. We are going to create some really great relationships over the next couple of years and this isn't an us problem. Like we've just got to push ourselves to be vulnerable and to feel some discomfort and go towards the things that are really important to us. And so we're going to do it, right? Like we can do this. (laughs) Yeah, I know we can do this. Okay, the next thing that I've been struggling with and is something I feel like I've struggled with my entire life is not feeling so good about my body. And I know that you can probably relate to this because so many women and even men can relate to this because of the messages we've heard our entire lives that tell us how we quote should look and what clothes we should be able to fit into and ways we can become more skinny and attractive and the list goes on. And I hate hate that this is something that so many of us have to struggle with. It is so hard to live in a culture that constantly tells us that we need to look differently, that we need to look better. Like everything is about how we look and we don't hear at all about how much more important it is to feel good rather than looking good like what the heck does that even mean and you know one of the very first reasons why I started therapy was because of an eating disorder and my relationship with food and although my body image issues are sort of always there I see it and feel it intensify when I'm stressed or when I'm going through hard stuff and If you've struggled with any eating issues or body image issues, I'm sure you've seen this too. It's almost like you try to get some control over things when things feel out of control or hard. And it feels like food in your body is something that maybe you have some control of. And although you know it's not necessarily healthy to to do this, you still fall back into some old habits sometimes. So yeah, I'm I'm going through some really hard stuff right now and I've definitely seen my body image issues like intensify and it's just so tricky because I, I know it, I can see it, it's like I can see it coming a million miles away and I still run into the same issues. And it's tough because for pretty much my entire life I've heard – The messages like, you're so skinny, and if I had your body, and although I get it, it's incredibly hard to hear these things because I'm not exempt from body image issues. I am just like every other woman who has had years and years of harmful messages and wiring, and she's just trying her hardest to undo this stuff. So... I know I'm not alone in this. I know you can look a certain way and people can perceive you as, you know, not having any issues and you should feel great because you're so skinny and it's just like, gosh, this is just not the reality with all of the messages we hear and get about our bodies and and what they should look like. And, you know, another element of this is now that I'm a mom – I hear so much messaging about loving your mom body and this has been so tough for me. (laughs) Like I get the intention of it. It's like, you know, you should be so grateful for your body because of everything it did to bring a child into the world and it's like, yes, I am so grateful for my body. Like my body is incredibly strong and powerful and amazing but my body isn't 
a mom body. Like it's just a body. And I want to love my body for once without any justifications. And I feel like saying, you know, you birthed a child and, you know, you should be so proud. It's like, I just want to be content. Like, I just want to be content with my body and I just want to feel good about the body that I'm in. So I've done a lot of work on this one and I really hope I can come to a place where I truly feel content, like just feel good and comfortable in my body and I know part of this is working on shifting my mentality about my body and what it means to me and so I've been doing a lot of that. I've also been working to limit the messages that I receive about what body should look like and I've been working to do less comparison and just more honoring and the biggest thing for me recently is I've been working to create a strong body like a body that just helps me to do the things I want to do in life, like hike, bike, ski, uh, play with my daughter, just like do the everyday stuff. I've really tried to make that shift of like, I just want to be strong. I just want my body to be capable. And that has definitely helped me to feel better about my body. Um, so yeah, I've just been lifting more. I have been doing a lot of Pilates, I've just been working on strengthening my body, which feels really good. It has definitely helped me. Um, But in general, I feel like this is just such a hard one for so many women. Like, I feel like this is a lifelong battle. Like, gosh, I, if anyone has some wisdom on this, I would love for you to share it with me. And just if you can relate to this one, I just want you to know like you're not alone. It makes so much sense why so many of us struggle with body image issues and food. And it makes so much sense why we struggle and why we feel the way that we do. But let's try to do our best to shift away from how we look and instead put more focus on how we feel. And I think this is where a lot of the healing happens but yeah this is one that I haven't quite figured out and I don't know if you ever quite figure it out it's probably helpful if I stop trying to figure it out (laughs) and just let myself be and let my body be so yeah goodness I'm working through this as I talk to you um but let's go on to the next one so this this one has been so hard for me ever since Amelia my daughter was a baby And she's almost six years old. She's going to be six in just a couple of months. I have always carried so much mom guilt. And even though I know it doesn't make any sense for me to feel it, I still feel it. And this one I've definitely done a lot of work on and I've come a long way. But it's still hard sometimes. So... If you follow me on social media, you probably see that I am a very present, hands-on, active mom. Like, I work very hard to be present, especially in my time with her. Meaning, I'm always doing things with her, whether it's playing games or playing outside or reading to her or teaching her new things or going on walks and going on adventures. Like, I'm with her a lot and sharing this with you kind of helps preface like all the things that I'm going going to go into. So the first thing that I've really learned about guilt that has been so incredibly helpful and just shifting for me is that guilt often comes from the outside, not the inside. Meaning we hear messages saying that as women, we we can do it all and we can be the present mom and the working mom and the mom who gives everything physically, mentally, and emotionally. And because of these messages, we convince ourselves that we're failing if we're not doing it all. Like if we're not spending every second with our kids, if we're not taking it all on and being super mom and saying yes to everything. So A big part of the guilt comes from these messages, these external messages. And then, of course, it translates into 
the messages we give ourselves and we internalize them and we create stories about these messages and we tell ourselves these really unhelpful things. So it's just been so helpful for me to recognize like I feel a lot of guilt but a lot of it doesn't really fit and it doesn't really fit because I've gotten a lot of really not healthy messages surrounding what it looks like or what it should look like to be a mom. So a big part for me in working through this mom guilt has been slowing down and acknowledging that I don't need to do it all, nor is it healthy for me to try to do it all. And this has helped me to find so much more peace with the guilt and of course just with myself and with being a a present mom. But it's also been really hard because I've had to do things that are super uncomfortable for me like slowing down and acknowledging that I don't need to do it all and I shouldn't I can't and I don't want to means doing things that are super uncomfortable like intentionally spending time away from Amelia doing things without her doing things on my own And this is really hard when for years you've been trying to be the mom that does it all. And of course, you feel such immense guilt when you spend time apart from your child. So yeah, I know this might sound weird. Like, oh, how you felt less guilty is actually spending more time away from your child. (laughs) But it has been such a huge help for me. Like I've recognized I, I have needs. I have wants. I need to actually take care of myself so that I can take care of her and be present for her. And it actually helps me to be a better better mom. And, you know, another thing that's been helpful for me that ties into this is recognizing that guilt often comes from doing too much, not from not doing enough, especially for others and not enough for me. And learning this has changed a lot for me because it's pushed me to do less for everyone else and it has pushed me to do more for me. And when I made this shift and really started to take better care of myself, to set boundaries and to say no and to just do things more for me first before I'm doing things for others, I have been actually able to be more present, more mentally and emotionally available, more calm, more peaceful, more regulated, more happy. But of course, it's been tricky, right? Because that means I have to do the hard things. I have to keep my boundaries. I have to ask for help. I have to say no more. I have to actually let myself receive help. Like, oh dear God, I swear for the first four years of Amelia's life, I never asked for help or received it. Like people would offer me their support and help without me even asking. And I, I would always say no. It's like looking back, I'm like, why, why did I do that to myself? But it made sense with all the messages that I've received and that women receive surrounding being the best mom and doing it all. So yeah shifting to I do so much and I need to not do so much and that actually helps me to feel more peace and to be a better mom and to not carry around this really silly guilt that doesn't even make sense or fit like I shouldn't even feel it but I do so although I've done so much work surrounding mom guilt and just guilt in general I think a part of me will always feel guilt sometimes because I'm human and as humans we're wired to feel and be attached to our closest connections. Like a big part of me always wants to be with Amelia and to do all the things with her. So I definitely have recognized that there are some very human aspects of this guilt and not everything needs quote fixing. We can just instead let ourselves feel and and let go of the feelings. So if you struggle with mom guilt, I hope that this has helped you to recognize that you don't have to continue to carry the guilt in the way that maybe you have been. And yes, it's going to be hard to let go of it, to work through it in a healthy way, but it'll be so immensely freeing and actually help you to enjoy motherhood 
even a little bit more. And just a quick PS here, you're an amazing mom. A, a freaking amazing mom. Okay, the last one is social media. <laughs> I have such a love hate relationship with social media there are like so many amazing aspects of social media and i'm i'm really grateful for it because i've been able to meet and support so many incredible people and i've built such an amazing community through it but i've recognized that it's also been a place that can be really harmful for my mental health like it can so quickly and easily suck me out of my my present joyful life and I can just very quickly go to this place of comparison and not feeling enough and and just feeling bad about myself and all the things and I'm sure you can relate to this and you know it's funny because I ran into uh, a girl that I went to high school with the other day and we were talking and just like catching up and she said Shannon I haven't had social media in two years and she said it you know, I was doing the whole comparison and it just really wasn't healthy for me. And gosh dang, I felt so much envy. (laughs) I was like, what your world must feel like and be like to not take all of the stuff in, to not be inundated and just, ugh. So yeah, sometimes I literally just sit and I imagine how good it would feel to not ever have to pull up social media again. But I also recognize like there's also a lot of good that comes from it. But yeah, sometimes I just feel like it's too much. Like there's way too much that we take in on social media in such a short amount of time while we're scrolling. And I really don't think our brains are designed to take it all in. And it's hard because we can't control what we see. Like you see the good, the bad, the, the fake, the curated, the ugly. You see it all. And sometimes it just makes you feel like, ugh, like everything has been sucked out of me. And you can feel sad and drained. Or like I said, feeling that comparison and questioning yourself. You know, sometimes I have my moments where I'm like, what am I even doing here? Like, am I even helping people? Am I even good enough to be doing this? Like, there is some imposter stuff there, but it's just like, I don't want to feel this way about social media. Like I want to feel good about it. So I have been doing a lot of work on my relationship with social media and I've had to set boundaries with myself and really stick to them. And I've had to adjust my expectations of just how much I need to show up there and what's actually helpful for me and healthy And honestly, I've been finding myself pulling away from posting as much on social media and just being on social media. And I've been pouring more of my time and energy into my weekly emails and my classes and my podcast. And this has felt really good for me. And this isn't to say I'm going to stop posting on social media because that isn't the case. I love posting there, but I just don't want it to be where I put most of my time and effort and energy anymore it really it disconnects me from my real life and it makes me not as present as I want to be which for me is one of the worst feelings I spend so much time in nature if you follow me on social media you definitely see that it's because that's where I feel so present and connected And I always want to feel present and connected. Not that you can 100% of the time. That's not what I'm shooting for. But I want to be as present and connected as I can be most of the time. And I want to be with my life and what's actually going on in my life. So yeah, I've had to do so much tweaking. And I also recognize there is so much good One of the best parts of social media is that it's actually helped me with all of these things that I've mentioned while talking to you. Like it has helped me to create some connections and it's helped me to shift my body image stuff. And, you know, it's just helped me to release some of the mom guilt because there are moms who are so raw and honest and vulnerable about what motherhood actually looks like and they're not trying to sugarcoat it and make it look like it's something that it's not so 
you know, I am really mindful about accounts that I follow and people that I follow. I follow people and accounts who make me feel less alone and they inspire me and they motivate me and they give me hope and they challenge me to see things differently and to do things differently. And sometimes people just make me laugh when I feel like I'm falling apart. Like I follow a few accounts that I can think of off the top of my head and I'm like, it's so magical that these people create these accounts that it's just to make you laugh. And some people might feel like that's so ridiculous. Like I can't believe these people have these accounts, but they are bringing so much to people who desperately need it. Like just need a laugh, just need to feel that joy. And so yeah, I just really am conscious about the accounts I follow. And I always am trying to follow people who just are pushing me to be a better human. And also people who are just wanting life to be full of laughter and fun and not so serious so I have to remind myself sometimes right like that's what my account does for for others I hope it does that for you so I know it's not all bad by any means but I know I've got to do some more work surrounding my relationship with social media and maybe you do too. So maybe this is your gentle nudge to take a look at your social media and just what are the accounts you follow? Who are you following? Do they make you feel good? Like what does your relationship look like with your phone, with social media? Like this is work that we really as adults need to be doing not only for ourselves but also for our kids and the next generation and yeah, I could go down a whole rabbit hole with this one, but I'm going to stop myself. <laughs> so my goodness, that was a lot. And I wish I could say this is all of it. This is the only stuff I'm struggling with, but it's not. And, you know, I say all, you know, quote all lightly because this stuff is hard and heavy. Um, but there are other things that I'm going through that I might not ever share here or on social media, and that's okay. Like, yes, I love being vulnerable and sharing my life and my struggles, but some things just need to stay private and are okay to stay private because there are things that I just don't want to share and talk about, and that's okay. So social media isn't fake. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit curated, but that's okay. That's why we have to be very conscious and, and present and, and connected. So yeah, there's so much more that I want to be honest and vulnerable about. And I love this. It's, it's very cathartic and helpful for me. So there will be more episodes like this. I have, I've done quite a few episodes already where I share very personal stuff and I, I love these episodes and so yeah I would love to hear what you think what do you think about these personal episodes do you like them what are your thoughts like I would love to hear from you and I just want it really this is partly for me like cultivating the connection that I want like I want people to feel like when they come to my podcast and they listen they're talking to a human that is very much like them. And my life is not all rainbows and butterflies. We all have our, our shit and some really hard stuff. And the more we let ourselves be with that stuff, the better life is. So yeah, before I just start crying, <laughs> I'll end the episode. Um, but until next time, keep taking healthy action. I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Healthy Push. If you want more, head on over to ahealthypush.com for the show notes and lots more tips, tools, and inspiration that will support your recovery. And if you're hoping for me to cover a certain topic, be sure to join my Instagram community at A Healthy Push and let me know in the comments what you want to hear next.